Hi everybody and welcome to today's LEGO Technic video. So today I'm going to be updating you on my latest changes to my LEGO Technic gearing ratio calculator tool. For those of you that uh, hadn't seen that video that I presented about four weeks ago on that, uh, what it's all about is that if you've designed, for example, some sort of gearing system in your favorite LEGO Technic design tool, such as Studio from Bricklink, uh, then sometimes if it's a particularly complicated uh, gearing system, you might uh, not be quite sure whether or not you've got all the gearing ratios the way you wanted them to or you're not necessarily sure about some of the directions of some of the gears that you've designed especially if for example your model includes uh, bevel gears uh, and differentials and so what this tool allows you to do is to analyze your gearing system online simply by uploading your LDR file and it allows you to uh, see all the different gearing ratios between various components within your design Alright, so if you want to try out the tool, all you need to do is go to my website, it's technicbrickpower.com, so you can just type in technicbrickpower.com into any web browser. Uh, you just go to the menu under tools, we've got the gearing ratio calculator, or you can just simply click on this image here, that will bring up the uh, gearing ratio calculator tool, there it is. Uh, it's just got a bit of a splash screen, and then you just simply need to choose an LDR file, and an LDR file is an LDRAW format file and you can export that from most uh, LEGO tools. So for example on Studio I can go to File, Export as LDRAW like that. Uh, I can just then save it to my file system and then once I go to the browser I can simply load that into the um, gearing calculator tool and there it is. So it's loaded that particular project. Uh, I'll just rotate it the way I had it in Studio like this. And what you can do, you can uh, simply connect a, a number of motors to the project on the left here. So all I need to do is click on one of these motors, click on the cog, and that will start flashing, which means it's ready to connect onto the project. And I might connect it, for example, onto this particular axle here, and then it will animate uh, the result and allow you to see uh, by highlighting or um, moving over any one of the parts. You can see on the bottom left here, the particular gearing ratio relative to that input uh, axle or gear that you've selected to connect the motor onto. So for example, I can look at this turntable, I can click on it, that will then uh, keep it selected, and we can see here that on the bottom left here, the gearing ratio is 9 over 14, uh, or 0.643 in terms of the ratio relative to the input speed. Now I can change the input speed of that motor to different speeds and see with the animation uh, the changes that makes in terms of the uh, speed of various components. Uh, I can, for example, look at another part like this one and see that the output there is 15 over 7. You can change the number of decimals that are shown if you want to see it in a de decimal format uh, or in a fractional format. It's just uh, always integers so they don't have any number of decimal places. Now the tool allows you to connect more than one motor at a time. So at the moment I've connected uh, motor A. This one's called motor A, motor B and motor C. I've connected that to that green flashing axle, so that's pretty much highlighting the fact that the axle is being driven by a motor. I can, for example, connect motor B to another component. For example, I connect this axle over here. But of course, this will uh, create a conflict because as soon as you connect two motors onto a, a gearing system like this, uh, there's obviously going to be some sort of gear jam, and it shows you that uh, you know the parts are jammed. That's why they're all flashing orange or red. Uh, and that's simply because this particular system's only got one degree of freedom, which means there's only one way that all the different uh, components can be driven uh, without any conflict. Now, of course, there are systems that have more than one degree of freedom, uh, and that is when you start using differentials. And that is one of the main updates I've made to this gearing uh, calculator tool, is the fact that it now deals with differentials a lot better uh, in terms of showing you um, not only you know, the uh, different speeds that differentials will take, but also if you connect more than one motor, it can calculate the uh, output gearing ratios relative to those input motors. All right, so I'll just show you a simple differential example. So here we have one that I've prepared earlier. So what we've got here is a uh, pair of differentials. So these are two separate sets of gearing systems. Now, as you know, a differential is a device with effectively three inputs. We've got uh, the two axles on either side, left and right, normally called A and B. And then we've got the uh, centre of the differential. And the relationship between the two axles and the centre is that the centre speed of rotation is simply the average of the two axles on either side. So there's a different relationship between the centre and the input axles. So in this particular case here, I've connected 
uh, the left side through this gearing system onto the right side so there's going to be if I drive this one then it will also drive the other side and we can determine the speed of the center so if I for example connect a motor to the uh, left side here uh, the gearing calculator can then determine the speed of the center and I'll just show you that on the left here uh, that is simply four thirds of that input speed and that's due to that gearing system that I've got on either side now the difference between for example this one here and the one on the right is on the one on the right I have connected or disconnected that axle so now there's no longer a relationship between the left axle and the right axle and this differential system becomes under constrained and so that's one of the updates I've added to this tool to be able to uh, deal with under constrained systems so for example if I now drive that left axle on this, this on this differential we can see that the calculator now works out that all these other components that are flashing kind of a yellowy orange are in fact under constrained and that simply means that uh, you know there's a d degree of um, freedom that uh, you know is still available within the system so at the moment by rotating or driving these gears there's only one possible speed that they can have as determined by the speed of the motor but these other components that are orange or yellow can have uh, another speed that's under constrained uh, and the way it resolves the uh, speed of those components is by simply trying to calculate a minimum kind of kinetic energy calculation now it's not completely accurate uh, all I simply do is minimize the square of the speeds of uh, all the other components that are unconstrained now what you can see here is by clicking for example on the differential we can see that the part is under constrained and the speed is simply based on a minimum kinetic energy calculation and in this particular case it uh, works out that the gearing ratio is a half between the differential and the input but of course because it's got one degree of freedom that is not necessarily true it really depends on uh, friction and other factors and things like that but uh, one of the major updates to the tool is the fact that you can now also drive the other side of that differential for example the under constrained part uh, with another uh, motor like that so we've got motor A and motor B and now the whole system can be res resolved and therefore it's no longer flashing yellowy orange and we can click on that center differential uh, and highlight it and we can see that the gearing ratio is given by half times motor A plus half times motor B so if I'm driving the simply the axles like that uh, then uh, like I said before the relationship is simply that it's the average of those two input axles if instead I drive the uh, secondary gears that are connected like this then we can see that now that central differential is given by minus a half times motor A times minus five sixths of motor B so now take into account those gearing ratios of those gears and can now determine uniquely that uh, central differential uh, degree of freedom. Alright, so this is the most simplest way of creating a one degree of freedom system. It's simply a differential that's under constrained. Now, uh, a less obvious way of doing it would be this particular configuration here with two differentials. Now, at first glance, um, you know, I'd say that this is not an under constrained system, but surprisingly, it's actually under constrained by a degree of one, so it's got one degree of freedom. And the reason is, is that each of these differentials needs uh, two of its axles, I guess, driven or uniquely determined in order to determine uh, the third output. And if you look at this particular configuration, if we treat, for example, this bottom axle as an input, then on the right we've created another relationship between uh, these two input axles to the differentials and one on the left. But each of the differential differentials needs two uh, of its inputs uh, fully determined. So what we need is four relationships uh, between the axles and in fact we've only got three so we've got that input axle this relationship on the right and the relationship on the left so in fact uh, there's not enough constraints within the system in order to uniquely determine the output at the top here and uh, like I said it's not necessarily very obvious so that is one of the benefits of this tool so you can simply load up your model drive it with one of the motors and it will straight away tell you whether or not the system is fully constrained and calculate the gearing ratios. So in this particular example here, we can see that all the gears that are flashing the orange yellow are in fact under constrained uh, and cannot be uniquely determined. So for example, if I click on that output there, you can see that the part's under constrained by one, which means by one degree of freedom. And the speed is simply based on a, um, you know, a minimum uh, speed squared calculation just to be able to give 
some animation or some output to this particular tool. Doesn't actually mean that the gears will behave like that in practice uh, because it's a, obviously a very complex calculation based on the frictions within the gears and things like that. So it's not necessarily uh, obvious what, um, you know, the, how the degree of freedom should behave. It's mainly uh, there to tell you that it uh, does in fact have a degree of freedom. And once you connect another motor, that will then resolve that one degree of freedom. So for example, if I connect it to this left, left axle over here, the system can now uniquely determine all of the gears and all these speeds and the relationship between the input and, for, uh, <coughs> for example, the output. So in this particular case, uh, the output is now uh, 1 ninth times motor A uh, minus 28 over 45 motor B. So if I drive motor A here, motor P, B there, then that is the relationship of the output. You can also look at some of the other uh, gears and uh, axles. So this one over here is simply determined completely by motor B, so it's actually independent of motor A. Of course, that's pretty obvious by looking at the uh, gear and relationship there. That's simply a one-to-one -one gear train between this axle and that axle. This axle on the top right there, for example, is uh, minus 10 over 63 motor A, take away ninth motor B. So again, uh, not very obvious if you were to try to calculate these relationships by hand. Um, it's not only quite complicated, but it's very easy to make a mistake with all the different fractions and things like that. So this gearing ratio tool uh, really makes it simple to, to, to determine whether or not there are degrees of freedom within your differential system and allows you to calculate uh, those gearing ratios exactly, both in fractional and decimal form. Okay, and finally I've got another example where I've created two degrees of freedom. So by having a more complicated differential system, in this case I have created a system um, with three differentials in this particular arrangement. Um, and obviously it's got some degrees of uh, freedom there because you can see there's a few of them are uh, under constrained. So now again if I just drive one of them um, you know, randomly, for example this one here, we can see that this whole right part, every orange flashing part is under constrained and if I click on one of them we can see here that it's under constrained by two which means there's in fact two degrees of freedom within this whole system and that means I can add a second motor and drive another axle for example I might choose this one over here and now we can see that uh, some of the gears are now uniquely determined or exactly determined but a lot of them are still under constrained. We can now again click on one of the axles and we can see that it's now under constrained by a factor of one or a, a degree of freedom of one, which means I need one more unique um, motor connection in order to fully determine the system. So I might connect that to this axle there. And now we can see that the system uh, is fully resolved and we can see what the relationships are between those inputs and any one particular axle or gear. So for example, I click on this yellow output gear here or axle here and we can see that uh, the relationship is uh, minus 1 times motor A, minus 1 times motor B, and 3 times motor C. Now another part might look quite differently. Um, that one there is minus 5, 6 motor B, 5 fourteenths times motor C. And again, that one uh, turns out to be independent of motor A. And of course some of the gears will be dependent on one motor, some on two, and some on all three, depending on uh, which ones you're looking at. So yes, this is the update to the gearing ratio calculator tool and now allows you to look at different degrees of freedom within differential systems and uh, yeah, see what the relationship is between different axles and different number of input motors. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and uh, yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. See you later.